Rebuttal to Bev and the Try Thinking on the Level crew, round 3.1. Answer to the math challenge. So this is just going to cover the, the math challenge, specifically the answer to the math challenge. And I started by reviewing slope, which is rise over run. And I identified this slope as one-third. And Bev had something to say about that. The slope of this graph is one-third. If you draw a perpendicular line. Um, <sighs> slope is one-third. It's one over three. Actually, it's, it's one-third, but... Uh... <laughs> Uh, if you were to ask, uh, what's the slope of this line? Uh, the rise is 2 and the run is 1. What would you say, Bev? Because I would say the slope is 2. Now, if you said 2 over 1, that is not wrong. That's descriptive. Uh, but the value of the slope is 2. It's a number. All right? Also, I reviewed that the uh, perpendicular is called a negative, or mathematically, it's the negative reciprocal. We're going to cover that a little bit later. So this, uh, if the slope of this line is one-third, then the perpendicular slope would be negative three. So the math challenge was starting with the function y equals x squared. Uh, what's the slope of the graph, or is it impossible? And what's the slope perpendicular to the graph, or again, is it impossible? And the reason why I'm covering these things is because uh, folks on, uh, on the level try thinking um, seem to indicate that you can't measure angles to a, a curve and that you certainly can't find a perpendicular to a curve. Um, and, uh, well, we'll see if it is possible. Now, I was, <laughs> I was looking forward to your response, Bev, but you just punted. Uh, you went straight for the answer key. Bev, I look forward to your discussion of these ideas on your show and for all non-Glober videos I'm sorry, all non-Glober viewers of this video, please feel free to share your answers in the comments. Uh, let's have a look. Um, what's he trying to get at with that? Uh, don't know. Rise over run, really, but then he's got like a, he's got a, a graph with a curve and the slope between two points, as you can see, the slope between two points, the changes on a mm -hmm. graph like that. So, but so you just write some random. For the flurfs, the slope of x equals um, uh, y equals x squared is 2x. Two 2x. Two Look. So uh, nobody needs to worry about that. It's been answered for everyone. It's 2x. Um, it, obviously variable, but I mean, let's call it 2x. Somebody in the chat says the 2x. I don't know if anybody else has put anything. Um, uh, yeah, nobody else is bothered about that. So you look forward to our discussion and... There is no well, discussion about that. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't particularly see what that's got to do with anything. Nope. So we'll just move on. Yep. So <laughs> it was funny. It says, uh, you know, I, I wanted to see your discussion. And then you're like, well, let's see what others think. <laughs> and then you scrolled right to the answer key. Um, that was not really what I was going for. Um, but it'll be really interesting to see what they do with this. You know, can you find the slope of a curve? Because there have been several other videos. Uh, Blue Marble Science had one, you know, just a couple of days ago. Petey literally dropped one today where he literally covered, you know, y equals yeah, x squared. And then, you curve, know, yeah. and so I don't know how closely the, the try. I'm going to say now uh, the slope of a curve or the slope of a point on a curve is ridiculous. Yes, but he showed that you cannot measure angle yeah. to that curve. And yeah, he's PT done, he's done another that. one. He's done another video, PTS. Okay. Yeah. So, but, I mean, again, I'm not taking it on. He, he thinks it'll be something that, um, well, it's up to anybody else. They can take it on if they want. But, I mean, I'm not taking on a slope of a curve. It sounds fucking <laughs> ridiculous to me. It's actually not ridiculous, and we'll we'll figure it out uh, 
on paper together, I, uh, I'll answer the, the question of what's the slope of this graph and the slope perpendicular to the graph without using calculus, just the definition of slope plus a little algebra. Okay, so here we have our graph of y equals x squared. And uh, the problem is that what if we were to try to, uh, to graph a, um, a sample slope? So what if we were to, oh, I don't know, pick the point, you know, 1 comma 1, 2 comma 4, and we could try to connect that with a line. But this line is actually a secant, right? It uh, hits the hits the curve in two spots, but that's not exactly the um, the slope of the curve. What you could do is maybe if you made something uh, slightly parallel to that, maybe maybe that slope is the slope of the graph at that point. But uh, I don't know. That's not very helpful for you know for other points. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out uh, a better solution. So one way of doing this is to go to return to the the definition of slope which is rise over run or change in y over change in x or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay and what if we were to just pick uh pick a sample x all right let's just pick some value x right some value x well what would be the y value so using function notation so, so this value x that would actually just be f of x all right so this is the point x comma f of x all right that's that point and then what what if we were to go to the right uh h units all right h units so our x value would be x plus h. And what would our y value be? Well, that would be f of x plus h. Again, x plus h is the input into the function. And so what if we were to figure out the slope between those two points? Again, this is a, this is a secant. But what is the slope? Well, the y value, the y values are f of x plus h. That's the second y value minus the first y value, which is f of x. And this is all over what's our second x value, that's x plus h, minus our first value, first x value, which is x. All right, and this is called the difference quotient. Now, you'll see in the denominator, um, this x and this minus x cancel out. So this is called the difference quotient. All right, now in this particular example, our function is x squared. So f of x plus h is going to be x plus h quantity squared minus the original function, which is x squared. And this is all over h. All right. So now here's where we have to do a little bit of algebra. x plus h quantity squared. Well, that's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared, that was the x squared originally, and this is all over h, all right? And again, we can cancel some things out. We have a, an x squared here, minus x squared here, and you'll see in this numerator that h can be factored out. So we can rewrite that numerator as h times the quantity, 2x plus h, all over h, and now these h's cancel out. So we find that the difference quotient to be 2x plus h. That is our difference quotient. And this difference quotient is really the slope of the secant, the slope of the secant as you go h units past x. All right. So what if h were to get smaller and smaller and smaller? Well, we can take what's called the limit. We could find, and let's use another color, we could find the limit as h approaches 0 of this difference quotient. And what is that limit? Well, 
If 2x plus h is the difference quotient and h is approaching 0, that limit is 2x. And that is our final answer. So just imagine on this graph, imagine h getting closer and closer and closer to x. So if h got infinitely close to x, this line would perfectly have the correct slope for that given point. So the slope is actually 2x. Now the second part, and we're going to go over a couple examples with this, but the second part is the, the perpendicular slope. And perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocals. So what is the negative reciprocal of 2x? That's negative 1 over 2x. So that is the perpendicular slope. All right. So why don't we illustrate this a little bit? So here I've already written in, since the, the slope is 2x, at x equals 1, the slope is going to be 2. At x equals 2, the slope is going to be 4. Same thing with negative 1. Negative 2, slope is negative 4. And what's the slope at, at 0? At x equals 0, that's going to be 0. Okay? So what we're going to do is let's see if uh, these slopes work out. So starting from this point, let's draw a slope of 4. So that's going to be a, a rise of 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do rise negative 4. I'm going to say this is a rise of negative 4 and a run of negative 1. That equals 4 as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. So I'm going to draw a line. And it turns out that that is a perfect slope at that point. And I think you get the idea, but let's try one of these negative ones. A uh, slope of negative 2. So that's a rise of negative 2, 1, 2, and a run of 1. And I can go in the other direction. I can go rise of positive 2 and a run of negative 1. Let's see if this works out. <laughs> And again, that slope perfectly uh, is this, the slope of the function at the point negative 2. Obviously, the slope of 0 would be a, a line parallel to the x-axis. In fact, it would be the x-axis. All right. Now, what if we were to go um, the uh, perpendicular slopes? All right. Per and, and let's use the lines that I just drew. So what is the perpendicular slope of negative 2? Well, that's the, the negative reciprocal. So the perpendicular slope is going to be, what's the negative reciprocal of negative 2? That's just going to be 1 half, positive 1 half. Well, let's see what, a, what kind of a slope we get with a positive 1 half. Again, from this point, rise 1, run 2. I can also rise negative 1 and run negative 2. And let's, uh, let's draw that in. And that is indeed perpendicular to the function at x equals negative 1. And let's try this point up here, 4. What's the perpendicular slope of 4? That's going to be negative 1 fourth. So from this point, I can go rise, well, how can I, I can do this, rise negative 1, but then I can run 4, but I can't really run 4 to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rise positive 1 and run negative 4. That is the equivalent slope. So let's rise 1. Now let's run negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's connect those. And you see that this is also the perpendicular slope. So it turns out that we can not only find the slope of the graph, but we can also find perpendicular slopes to the graph as well. So here's a couple illustrations of the difference quotient. Again, the formula is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And you can illustrate that. And again, the key is we want to be getting h close to 0. So we actually take the limit, the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient. And it turns out that that's the derivative, also known as the, um, the slope of the graph. But I figured I would do this thing without calculus. So what I've done here is I've uh, used a Google spreadsheet, Google Sheets, 
and I've made a difference quotient uh, illustration using using spreadsheets. And uh, again, the instructions. Um, and this is going to be shared in the comments, um, or I'm sorry, in the description, the video video description. It's going to be uh, freely uh, available. And now, if you don't have Google Sheets, I'm pretty sure that you can click on the link and then you can download it as a um, uh, download it as an Excel file, and then you can open it with Excel. If you have a Google account, if you have a Gmail or you know YouTube account, then uh, this should open right up into your Google Drive. Anyway, um, what we've got is two functions here. What I've I've got is the y equals x squared function. And so it's illustrated down here. And I also have a semicircle. So basically, it's the top half of a circle. Um, the circle formula is uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So this is a unit circle. So r is 1. And if you solve for y and you just take the top half of it, y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's a perfect, uh, that's a perfect semicircle. So let's take a look at what we just did, which was y equals x squared. And again, the difference quotient, basically I start with some value of x, and then I'm going to have a value of h, and I'm going to add x plus h. All right. And what the spreadsheet does is you, you have exactly one thing that you can type in, and that's whatever value of, a, of x you want to start with. So in this case, we could start off at x equals 0. And then as we add smaller and smaller values of h, so you know 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 0 0.1 is 0 0.1. And so these values are getting closer and closer to x. And then we could find the, the formula of the function or the, the, the uh, values of the function. So again, the function in this case is just x squared. And then we're going to have f of x plus h. All right. Then we're going to find the slope of that secant line that goes between them. So the point behind the spreadsheet is you could see as h gets closer and closer and closer to 0, the slope of the secant should be getting closer and closer and closer to the exact slope. All right. So let's try typing in a couple other numbers. I think we had from our from our example spreadsheet what we did the uh, negative one was one that we did. So let's type in negative one, and we found the slope to be negative two. So look at how close we are getting, <laughs> negative one point nine 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 nine. Um, so that's really really close to the actual slope of negative two. Um, and I think the other one we did was positive two. That was a slope of four. And and we get there, we, we, we get pretty close. OK, uh, so again, um, the slope is the secant uh, the, as the H approaches zero. That's the slope of the secant. And then here's the first derivative, which is the limit as the difference quotient gets um, approaches as H approaches zero of the difference quotient. And you can also do the same thing with the semicircle. Now, the semicircle, you got to be careful in that the semicircle has a, a domain restriction. You can only put in values between negative 1 and positive 1. And uh, what I said is down here is for fun, you could try a couple different values of x. So let's, uh, let's try this one. Now, this value is actually root 2 over 2. And so let me put in this value for root 2 over 2. And what we see is we, we get a slope of negative 1. Now, what does a slope of negative 1 mean? That is a, um, a downward, a 45 degree downward angle. I don't know if you can see my mouse here. And what would be the perpendicular slope? Well, that would be a slope of 1. That would be the, the slope of a perpendicular to a circle. Now, some people say you cannot find the slope of a perpendicular to a circle, but here it is. Um, so yeah, you can you can have fun with this. So again, there's exactly one thing that you're going to be typing in. I'm going to do a command Z to get rid of that. Um, uh, so just just enter in a value into the um, into the the green cell, and then it will do all the calculations for you. All right. So I hope you enjoy playing with that. So I want to uh, do a special thank you to my channel. Members, uh, Johnny Ragadu, Luke Filewalker, Jim Jackson, Timothy P. Southwick, Peter Harrington, Sean Hawkins, your pal Al, Rachie 50, Rachie 50, I'm sorry, and then Citizen 9. Thank you so much for your generosity. And as always, um, please be kind in the comments. Take care. Bye-bye.